started out as collective, and so um, people would um, do things based on interest areas, um, and then we would come together and um, people would research information, and we'd put together just basically a two-sided um, piece of paper folded up um, with some party information. Uh, so when you went to parties, you'd just take some of the information, maybe have some condoms or other things like that, or bottles of water. And basically it was about just looking out for people who looked like they might need a little bit of help. People in trouble or looking distressed or looking a bit lost. Uh, people in the middle of the dance floor with no water going into them. So it was, that, was, that was really what we did. Um, I was hired as the, to coordinate the project. So we did mostly, um, in those days, we did um, outdoor parties. Green Ant, Earth Core, Crew, uh, wasn't a lot of indoor sort of stuff. We had a few warehouse kind of parties in the western suburbs. Mm. So we used to, you know, bundle us all in a car, tiny car, the Vivade's car, um, ourselves and possibly the doctor. <laughs> If it was an outdoor party, our own tent. So it was a chill out zone for people. We probably at the time, the focus at Beer Bates was um, blood awareness. So HIV education and Hep C education. And so we, we would set up as a chill out space at the parties. We would have, we'd be a needle exchange. We had condoms and lube. We had water. You could come and flop on a beanbag, cry on someone's shoulder. Uh, whatever you really needed to do it was a safe zone. Well, the, the concept and the name came from a earlier project by the uh, New South Wales Users and AIDS Association under the Tribes Project. And the Tribes Project was great because it was um, like little communities of drug users could individually apply and do like a peer-based project where you actually developed information that worked for your community. So it was a really good project. And um, so the guy who um, started it, uh, that peer who put in that application, um, he uh, made a film. So we based it on just um, community-based organising principles where, you know, it's like if it's if information is generated and the questions and answers are generated from within the community that are seeing something that needs to be responded to, then you get something that works. There was an Earth Corps. It was the 99-2000 uh, um, uh, New Year's and it was a week-long party. I don't even remember where it was. Hey, Viv. But it was okay. like a dust. Dust bowl. It was just, and you'd walk down to the creek, and it was, you know, beautiful in the middle of nowhere place. <laughs> it was just massive, and and we were probably there ten days because we got there a little bit early to set up, and um, and then stayed a little bit after, or at least a day or so. And I think we had a crew of about ten or twelve then. Well, I, I don't know. You know, it was one of those kind of like a apocalyptic kind of settings, and you know, yeah. it, the world. The new millennia, the world could have ended, so we're all pretty yeah. wild. Right? It was a wild party. You ended up supporting someone, Viv, who had a stroke through in that party, hey? Yeah, that, I mean, we had a couple of uh, experiences like that, but we were very lucky, I think, my, um, Mel, the other Mel, Phoebe, <laughs> to have that relationship we did with the first aid guides. Super great guys, but um, very enthusiastic about their first aid work. But then we teamed up, really great relationship with those. So every, like quite a lot of the outdoor parties we went to, they'd be the same crew there. One of them, I mean, the great side of that is hearing that that person's recovered fully, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like that's um, yeah. possible in different circumstances. If we didn't have a response team there, like Rave Safe or, or Dance Wise, that wouldn't have been the case. Just remember, you know, before they go out there, they'd be loading up you know, the car with all the, lots of, you know, soft teddies and lollipops and lots of really things that they, only they, from being inside that world, would know what was going to work, I suppose, you know, to sort of really to be able to calm a person, that kind of model of having the peer workers out there sort of roving, you know, the bush race so that they could get sort of access and be able to really do that sort of, you just appropriate engagement people and go, you know, you're okay and be able to look out for them. And we're well placed to also see when someone potentially was was not okay. And another thing I, re I remember too was the huge role that Rave Safe played with organisers, you know, to make Rave safer. So, you know, a lot of the bush just, I remember early, like there was no access to drinking water. So Rave Safe, like being really, um, instrumental in sitting down with the organisers and sort of going, you know, okay, so what are we doing about this? And almost like, yeah, sort of creating a bit, I think, you know, um, doing a lot of education 
with with organisers about how to make um, a, a rave safe. In 2004, the police introduced sniffer dogs into dance parties and events. Um, so we did some really big campaigning around that stuff as well. Because of the police presence that was starting to happen, having sniffer dogs outside their events, um, having the police really like crack down on all their permits and things like that, and basically started to say, well, why do we have rave safe at our events? We're not a rave, we're a festival. Well, we don't just go to raves. We go to all sorts of different dance events. I think it was over like a couple of events where they just started going, no, we don't want you there or don't put up your sign, you know, things like that. And I was like, well, what, what's going to solve this? You know, we, we can't not go um, because, you know, that we're, we're funded and it's actually part of most per permits to make sure that punters are safe and things like that. Um, so um, we worked with them and I said, okay, well, we'll change the name so we're not rave safe anymore and you can have us at your event. Um, taking away the argument, essentially, um, because it really was starting to be a major barrier for us getting into some of the biggest events in Melbourne at the time. Um, but yeah, DanceWise was one of the first ones um, to come. And um, I've always really loved it because Rave Safe's um, animal, as it were, was always the owl and it was all about, you know, um, the the night owl, someone who stays up all night, they've got the wise kind of like, you know, they, they give out, they, they're always seen as wise animals um, and they've got a bit of protection about them and they're quite powerful. Um, so um, I guess the dance wise kind of pulled on some of those those qualities. Um, it was also quite the expansion of the scene as well and when it comes to the dove scene, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind started to get bigger, um, the kind of influx of people coming in where kind of the demographics started to look different. There's a lot more crisis driven work rather than an education campaign per se. There was one fella who um, came with his mate and was, you know, pretty out of it. Um, we, you know, we looked after him and so forth. I'm pretty sure the next day he came back and said, how do I get involved? And by the next event, he came on board as a volunteer. And both those um, um, uh, fellas came on as volunteers because they were so impacted by it. They were so, yeah, their hearts were really in it. You know, their hearts were really in it. They had the right mindset. Like, you know, everything just kind of fitted. So that was a really nice experience for me to kind of be supporting them. And then by the next event, they've come on board, trained to actually do the work. Like that kind of turnover and that kind of impact was really nice to take away. Um, we found a um, lady in her 30s or 40s, but she essentially was um, roaming around saying a lot of non gibberish stuff. So, you know, um, we got called to kind of go have a look and touch base with her. She was um, hearing messages from other sort of planes and so forth. Um, her report was that her friends had left her. They have um, uh, left with all her stuff. She's basically been stranded there. Um, she has a diagnosis of schizophrenia. She has had uh, many psychedelics and so forth. Um, so we were able to create a safe enough kind of conversation with her for her to come into the DanceWise tent. Um, and then we were eventually, she left um, the site um, in an ambulance. So without our program being there, she would have been likely to be one of those cases who got pinned down and had a lot more, um, I guess, psychological trauma and um, um, difficulty experienced if she wasn't having that safe way of engagement and then voluntarily and willingly going into an ambulance as opposed to involuntarily pinned down and taken to hospital. You know what I mean? So Around 2015, it just really exploded and the most events we've done since then has been 45 in a year. When you give to the community as part of the DanceWise team, you can be privy to some really personal and intimate moments where people may be going through a really challenging experience. You might also be supporting someone or bearing witness to them, um, having a really blissful but still incredibly overwhelming experience so you have to be willing to stay grounded and I'm often just in awe 
of the the strength and love among our community to support each other and work through things. I am proud to be part of it at a time when it's expanded outside of Victoria, um, expanded into delivering other specialised services like response to gender-based violence in event and festival settings and the delivery of drug checking services at events through Pill Testing Australia in ACT in 2018 and 19. About 20% of people in their 20s have used MDMA or ecstasy in their lifetime. We are saying that it does happen and there are pragmatic approaches that can be taken in order to reduce the harm experienced by young people. Um, I look forward to what people are going to do next because I think that the future is health focused when it comes to drug law and we're part of that movement. When we kicked off the Dance Wise New South Wales in 2017, the tight knit nature of the Dance Wise New South Wales team, with encouragement and enthusiasm, we can do, we can, you know, we can approach issues, we can overcome issues, um, and we can really strengthen each other. So that's something that I'm proud of contributing up north. Um, and uh, we were talking about, you know, who, what creature is a creature of the night? And obviously, dance wise, Vic have the owl because the owl is a very uh, wise creature. And we were thinking, what is a creature of the night? And who sends up a call for help when others are in trouble? And we thought the wolf does. One really lovely story from, I think, Dragon Dreaming. We got, uh, I think, three and a half thousand people to agree that the wolf pack does not leave anyone behind. You know, in these spaces for family. And we did our biggest festival ever. We did Festival X up here in uh, Sydney. And I was in the operations center uh, with a crowd of like 40,000 people and like directing rovers on the radio. And it felt like a really big moment in our service, like stepping up and becoming like, really professional. One of the main things I feel happened at my time with DanceWise um, has been growing the program from maybe around 100 um, peers to almost 250 now and really trying to like keep the culture and the beauty of like what the DanceWise community is like maintain that at a much larger scale and much larger size. DanceWise is made up of the people who it cares for and that volunteer for it and I think it really says a lot about the good parts of people and humanity when you can see such a group of people together. It was my first time being the team leader on shift and I get this radio call from some of the rovers being like, Shh, um, there's a guy in front of the stage, he's dug a hole and he's filled it with water and he's dancing naked in the hole. And I'm like, Shh, is he happy and healthy in the hole? And I go, Shh, yes, he's happy and healthy. Shh, cool leave him be and I just love that because it's one of the ways that dance wise is so different because in other places if there's somebody naked dancing in a hole that they filled with water this would be a police response a medical response instead of go actually going is this person in a good state of mind are they harming other people are they harming themselves nope leave them be the amount of young people that we've had who've come into our space who feel more comfortable coming to us because we look a little bit differently, we speak the same language, which has definitely led to us saving lives. It's everyone wants everyone to just go there, dance, and have that sense of community. But you need to have those people out there looking out for each other, and we can kind of bring that sense of unity. To be able to just grow and develop the team and our team skills and the culture within the team uh, is something that I'm really excited for and just see what kind of opportunities we can uh, start doing and branching out with uh, is just really exciting for me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to 2021 and to meeting and developing connections with yet more community members and team members. The DanceWise program model has been around for 25 years, is government funded in Victoria and now in New South Wales. Uh, but the program model is essentially and always has been peers looking after our mates. Whether 
we are in uniform, formally delivering services or not, the program model holds true wherever community members promote the values of health promotion, community engagement and peer support. DanceWise promotes health rights, human rights and harm reduction.